Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the October meeting of the Mountain View Community Units Group. What? Yes, I am recording. I've had it on record for about the past five minutes. Okay, um, today's agenda, and I hope I got this, uh, we're going to talk about the music group business, which is important, Tommy Tech Topics, with a super announcement that affects almost all of us, unless you live in Bisbee. Um, tip of the month, I don't, the computer lexicon, and then we're going to be talking about a subject which I think is going to really surprise a lot of you, artificial intelligence, and how it affects our daily lives, and how much of it is out there you don't realize. I'll tell you right now, putting together this presentation, I was amazed at what I was finding. Absolutely amazed at what you can do with artificial intelligence. And well, that, I'm going to stop right there. And then a question and answer. We do accept sponsorships. Right now we have three sponsors. It's $10 a meeting, $100 a year. Um, you get a slide during the meeting. You get a posted video on the web. You get a Facebook mention. And ask around who knows who you can find that may want to sponsor a meeting. We accept it from anyone. We have our first sponsor is a uh, Story Power. It is a podcast by S Lucinda Sage McGordon, who just happens to be married to our vice president. If you have not, if you have not listened to this podcast, it's well worth listening to. It's a very enjoyable podcast. I catch it just about. The uh, and our second sponsor is Mia Bella Gourmet Products. By Carol McLean, the candle, candle lady. And once again, these are amazing candles. Um, we're still, we still have the ones that I bought from you three years ago. We're still using them. Okay, and our third one is uh, John Buno Photo and Video. It happens to be me. Uh, meeting all your photographic needs. And uh, I've pretty much gone into retirement, but I do service any user group members that need something. So, Mountain View Computer User Group business. Okay. First off, the officers. We have me, I'm the president, re-elected last meeting. Mike McLean, the vice president. Barry, our other vice president. Carolyn McLean, our treasurer, who will now give us our treasurer's report. Treasurer's report. Yeah. Checking account has to be over, or I think it's five hundred dollars. So I, I put most of the money in the checking. When every month I have a, a, another way to kind of get to have this transfer going, but take the checking and transfer it back into the savings. So then I got to keep on taking the savings back into the checking oh. to keep it free. <laughs> How many, uh, oh. Is this Wells Fargo? <laughs> okay. So right. right. Yeah. So that would be eight. Oh, and then Barry put in, so that's nine. I'll be contributing, so okay, that's, that's 10. ten. Still five short, but I have a a, a discussion on that. I'd like to do. Jim Emmons is still our webmaster. Um, he does exist. I spoke with him two weeks ago. Uh, we're going to skip this for today. Um, we have our website, which is kept up to date of what's going on. We have our Facebook page. We have our resources page, which will be coming down after this meeting. Um, no one has accessed it in three months, so I'm bringing that down. Here are some of our benefits. Hardware checkout, professional consultation, discounts, uh, both Barry and I, and just so people know, at least for me, if the user group does shut down, which is a possibility, my consulting rates will be at $75 an hour telephonically, $125 in person, minimum one hour on each. Um, so at $35 an hour for in-person free telephone, it's kind of a bargain to have the group going. Okay, here's membership. <coughs> Pretty much you all know what this is. Pay the amount, mail a check. Here's Carolyn's address, or you can pay via PayPal. This, at last meeting and at the executive meeting, membership in the group has gone down a lot. Even people watching the videos online, it's the same three people every month. We set our original goal last month for 15 new member paid members. We did not reach that. So we have one of two alternatives. Um, we could shut down the user group, no longer continue meeting. And I just thought of this one this morning. We continue until the money runs out. To meet until the money runs out. Okay, um, I forgot to update this. Next month is, what's the topic for next month? How to kill or what to do if you get spam. Now, I'm going to tell you a quick story. Next month's meeting is how to identify scam, what to do if you get it, fishing expeditions, how to see what happens. And we're going to talk all about these, telephone, who do you report it to if this happens? 
there is an agency in the federal government that you actually report these to. And it's not the FCC, which is what I thought it would be. Okay. And then December, what's the December meeting? Oh, this is a big one. With the introduction of the iPhone 14 and iOS 16, emergency services has become a major topic. Many of us are becoming elderly. And you know when you're becoming old is when you go and they ask you during your annual physical or whatever they call it these days, how many times have you fallen this past year? Yes, until you turn a certain age, they don't ask that question. You know you're old when they ask that question. That becomes, it's a major issue. What do you do if you're in the middle of the desert driving and your car breaks down and there's no cell phone service? What do you do? What if you're hiking between, let's say you're on the Arizona Trail and you are seven hours walking out of the trailhead in Utah and you get flooded and you need to be rescued. Not if you've done anything wrong, you're in trouble. No cell phone service, what do you do? You'll find out in that meeting. And the answer is amazing. What happens if you get an automobile accident? The uh, Well, the new iPhones, if it detects an accident and you do not respond that you're okay, it will automatically dial 911, give your location, and have uh, first responders respond. If you fall down with an iPhone or an Apple Watch, if you fall down and you don't tell your watch that you're okay, it will call, it will dial 911 and your emergency contacts that you stipulated to come help you. We'll be talking all about these services when it comes up, explain how they work, what you can do, what you can't do. Um, one of our prior members, I had lunch, uh, coffee with him yesterday, and he had been looking at getting one of these lanyards as opposed to an Apple Watch. Well, he didn't want to be it because they're very inconvenient, and they are. And he found out in two years, he can pay for his Apple Watch easily, and it does more. So that's what's coming up. Um, so, Timely Tech Talks. Tech Topics. Start that one again. Timely Tech Topics. Everything you didn't know you wanted to know. We've got two. This month has been, except for iOS 16, has been released. If you own an iPhone, I strongly encourage you to update it is an amazing update. It is what I consider to be the first major update to iOS 16 we've had in about five years. It's got so many things added to it. It's incredible. But this next announcement affects all of us. Most of us have to use Cox Cable or some other cable company in the region. We normally end up getting bad service, expensive rates. There is finally an alternative that is coming to our area. The major carriers... AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile have been testing in our area sans Bisbee. I do not know if Bisbee is included in this or not. I do not know. 5G and Ultra 5G. That's a new standard data rates. Once that network is established here, the major carriers will be offering, offering home internet, which will give you approximately 5 megabits per second upload and, I mean, 50 megabits per second upload and approximately 50 megabits per second download. Prices starting as low as $25 a month. Unlimited data. I have the Verizon plan right now. To add this on to my Verizon plan, we talked to the guys, said, well, you'll be 25 a month. I said, what about unlimited? He said, do you have unlimited data now? I said, yes. He said, there will be unlimited data for an additional 25 a month. The average will be about 49 a month. $100 a month right now to Cox and getting crappy service. $25 a month and I get great cell phone service. Hmm, 125, 120, it's not much brain. So how you know, now what you will get is a little box that will replace your Cox cable modem. If your phone now can receive 5G and you see the 5G show up on your phone, then you know that you're in a good location. If you don't have a phone that does 5G, then you can't tell. If you have a phone that does do 5G and you're not seeing the 5G, they are working on it right now and it's supposed to be implemented this December. Okay, let's move right along. Questions, we've already had our questions. Okay, we've got a plethora of suggestions. Now, I'm going to go first with mine, which is the Apple TV. Then we're going to do Barry's. What we talked about last month at the meeting is that rather than devoting a meeting to new um, updates that come in, we're going to cover those under share a tip or favorite apps, uh, which and Barry's going to be covering today five iOS 16 quick tips. There are so many things in iOS 16 that have changed for the better. Is what, over a 1,000 changes? I, I, I can't keep up with it, but, I mean, they're all tremendous. 
and they're all non-intrusive. You, you can keep doing business the way you've been doing, but they've added things to it. So the first one, for those who own an Apple TV, I actually discovered another trick that works like a champ. If you have an Apple TV, you have in What's Next, which is a bar of programs that you've either added to or you started watching. Right, and this is anywhere you can see, either continue watching or what's next. What's If it says what's next, definitely is supported. Continues, might support it. So let's say you started watching a show and you didn't like it. Well, it, they're in what's next. How do you get rid of it? If you go to the what what's next bar and highlight it with a long press, it brings up a sub-menu of things you can do, such remove it. Market is watched. May, Pretend that I never even watched this show, which is what I do a lot. Yeah, continue. Um, so that's available to you to clean up that bar, which heretofore you've never been able to do. If you're in YouTube on the Apple TV, you can do the same thing with on, the, on any of the bar lines. You can go up and add it to a playlist without watching it. You can just go long press and it brings up a submenu of including I'm not interested and you can remove it. Not documented anywhere that I've been able to find. I even went to the Apple TV user's guide. No mention of this at all. Okay, so now we got, we're going to do the five quick tips. It's a video. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. Hello, this is Barry, and I've got five iOS 16 quick tips. So if you've upgraded your iPhone to iOS 16, these tips are for you. First off, iOS 16 adds the capability for you to see and either copy or speak your Wi-Fi password. To do that, you have to go to the Settings app. I've got the Settings app bottom left here, top of my, of my home screen, and uh, I'm going to go to Wi-Fi, and you see my Wi-Fi network name there at the top. If you tap on the little I inside the circle, you'll get information about that Wi-Fi network. And you'll see your password. It's encrypted, of course, and it just shows the little dot. If you tap on that field, it will authenticate you, either Touch ID or Face ID, and actually show you the text of your Wi-Fi password. The overlay allows you to either copy or make the iPhone speak it out loud. Tip number two, also in settings, you can now show the battery percentage up in the status bar if you have an iPhone with Face ID. You'll notice in the upper right, cor upper right corner of my iPhone, it just shows the battery graphic with a, you know, just kind of filled in with an estimation of about how much charge is left. If in settings you go down to battery, you've got a couple of switches at the top. The top one is, is a new one for iOS 16 on iPhones with Face ID. You can turn that on, and now you see it has the battery filled in but a number in it instead. That gives you the percentage, if you so desire to see the number on your home screen. The third tip is also in settings and has to do with your keyboard. You have to go to the settings for sounds and haptics. It's in the second group down under your ID. And then scroll until you see keyboard feedback. Now, prior to iOS 16, 15 and earlier, there was sound feedback only could turn on keyboard clicks so as you typed on the keyboard on your on your iPhone it would make a little ticking noise now you've got both sound and haptic feedback your iPhone has a little haptic engine in it so it makes a little tiny vibration so if you'd like to feel something when you type as well as sound or one or the other here's where you can turn them on or off independently fourth tip is not in settings it's a new feature in photos for iOS 16. So I'm going to launch the photos app. I've got the photos app on my dock so I'm going to tap on it there to launch the photos app and at the bottom of the photos interface you'll see four icons library for you albums and search. Tap on albums and it shows you your albums, shared albums, people and places and stuff and you keep scrolling it'll show you your different media types and the quantities of each that are in your library if you keep going down to the very bottom, you've got a section called Utilities, and you can see Imports, Duplicates, Hidden, and Recently Deleted. Duplicates is what's new in iOS 16. So once you load it, it will do this in the background. It examines your library and looks for duplicate images. 
And if you tap on it, it you go to that interface and it, it says that I have 367 f duplicate photos and 12 duplicate videos. Man, oh man, I could save some space, both in iCloud and on my devices. And if I scroll, you can see, sure enough, looks like they've got quite a number. Now, it'll also sort out similars. You notice this, this section down here is a, I did a whole series of shots with a, with a moonrise. And some of them are different sizes, you can see, although it's, it seems to think they're the same image, they might be uh, slightly different. But, I mean, in terms of, they might be actually separate files that are not exactly the same, but they're similar enough that it sees them and will flag them for you. You'll notice that there is a merge button next to each set under the date. What will happen is that the uh, software will reconcile those two images. And it doesn't actually merge the pixels. It's kind of a misleading button in a way. What it does is it merges the metadata. So if like if you have a if you have a location for one and not the other, it'll keep the location of that of the one. It'll also keep the highest resolution version. Like you'll notice this one here, 382 kilobytes and the next one next to it, 1.1 megabyte. The 1.1 megabyte version of this duplicate is obviously probably the better quality one because there's more data in the file. If I tap on merge, it's going to merge these two items and it tells you what it's going to do here. So it uh, merging will keep one version of the duplicate, combining the highest quality and relevant data and moving the rest to recently deleted. So if I merge those two and they disappear from the duplicates, but if I go back to albums and go to recently deleted, it will show me uh, that one that it put in here. I got 29 days to reclaim it if I want. So duplicates in the Photos app is brand new. Now this is also coming to Photos on the Mac, so you may want to wait especially if you use your Mac to download all the high resolution, uh, full resolution originals uh, and do the duplicate sorting there on your Mac once you get Mac OS 13 Ventura. Now my fifth and final Mac OS, or uh, <laughs> sorry, iOS 16 quick tip. If you want to learn more about what's new and what you can do with iOS 16, guess what? There is a user guide. You just don't get it in a box because we don't buy software in a box anymore. But Apple makes it free in the Books app. So if I launch the Books app on my iPhone here, I can go to search, and I've already done a search here. I can type in iOS 16 user guide at the top. You'll see that, and the top result is iPhone user guide. Now, it doesn't say I, iOS 16's user guide, but each uh, version of iOS 16 has its own user guide for the iPhone because iOS 16 is just the iPhone. So tap on that and you'll notice in the cover you'll see it says iOS 16. So this is the iOS 16 version of the iPhone user guide. And since I've already actually uh, uh, added this to my library, it just says download. If, it, if, you had, if you've gone here for the first time, it'll just say get, I think, G-E-T. <laughs> or maybe it'll say buy. But it's free, so I have it on my iPad. I'm not going to download it on my iPhone here. But if I go to my library, I can see that it is there, iPhone user guide. And if I go farther down here, there's an older iPhone user guide from Apple, and that was the iOS 15 one. There's a version of the iPhone user guide for each version of iOS. And uh, that's five quick tips for iOS 16. Enjoy the rest of the day. Um, I've got a tip to add on this. It's not an iOS 16 tip, but it's a tip that most people don't know about. It has to do with passwords. Let's say you have a network at your home. Okay, most of us have that. A friend of yours comes over. You want to give them network access. Well, normally that means identifying the network, giving them the password. Oh my God, I'm giving out my password. What you do is you tell your friend, go in and join my network. When they do that on your phone, it will pop up and say, do you want to let so-and-so join the network? If you say yes, it issues them a temporary password that is good until they leave that area. Now, what's nice is, is if they come back, it activates again. The We did this with my daughter when she came to visit us. She has not been home for a year or two years. I've changed the password. She comes in and I said, hun, do you have Wi-Fi? She says, yes, absolutely. 
Okay. It knew who she was, knew I changed the password, and it all automatically. So this is a great way of temporarily giving access to somebody without giving out the password. It's something, and it's, it's buried inside the user guide. I mean, really buried. You have to hunt to find that one. But I found out it because it popped up and said, hey, do you want to grab this person? Okay, the next one is on Mac OS traffic lights. Um, to close, minimize, or go full screen? That is the que- that is a good question, Barry. Oh, by the way, for those of you who own iPads, the there is a feature of the iPad, which I was going to demonstrate and I totally forgot about till just now. If you're not using it, you're really wrong. And that is, if you see a little box in the window with three little dots in it, that box is a great addition because if you tap on that box, it asks you, do you want to have a full screen, half screen, or a sliding window. So if I say half screen, it splits the screen and it says, go find the second application that you want to have on the second side of the screen. You tap on that and it opens up automatically. Okay. I'm going to show you the one reason to update to iOS 16. This one feature alone makes the update worthwhile. This right here is the search box. Before to get to the search box, you had to go to the top and swipe down. But for people like my wife, who cannot do a swipe down nor remember a swipe down. The fact the search button is now right here and all you do is tap it and it brings up the search. That makes it so incredibly convenient for the people who can't figure out how to swipe down. So that is, to me, that is worth the entire upgrade. So let's move on. Wow. Okay, let's take a break. Okay, we're going to get started. We're now going to do, okay, computer lexicon. First definition, what is artificial intelligence? This is key to understand. It's a branch of the computer science dealing with the simulation of intelligent behavior in computers. And it's the capability of a machine to imitate intelligence or human behavior. And the way we do this is what's known as the Turing and the Turing test, if I set a person down in front of a screen, and on the back side of a screen is either a human or a machine, and you start conversing with that, and you can't tell if it's a human or a machine by asking the questions, then you have created artificial intelligence. That's the Turing test. Up until three years ago, no machine was able to pass the Turing test. IBM's Alfred was the first one that did. As it, I believe it was 25 people sat and conversed with Alfred and could not tell if it was a human or a machine. In fact, most people thought it was a human and were dumbfounded when they found out it was a machine. Conversely, they had a human and about 20% of the people thought the human was a machine. Machine learning, now this is different than AI, (coughs) is the performance by which a computer is able to improve its own performance as in analyzing image files by continuously incorporating new data into an existing statistical model. What that means is your phones do that. Your phone is constantly learning from what you do. Siri is learning from what you do. Siri is an AI app of sorts, but it's more machine learning. It learns your habits, what applications you use. So that's machine learning. So your phones are more an example of machine learning than AI. Now, let's get into the world of AI and you. Now, I'm going to start off with some very routine type things. We're going to progress. To give you an example, for those of you who came in here early, you know the music I was playing? That was AI-generated music. I created that music with an AI app telling it what I said, this is what I want, and it generated that music. That was not composed. And everybody kept trying to figure out, you know, who is that? You know, you know I composed it. So let's move on. There are four different types of artificial intelligence. React machines, limited memory, theory of mind, and self-aware. Just know that there are different aspects of AI. We also have you know, different subsets of AI. AI is a big field. We are going to be dealing almost exclusively with reactive machines, not touching any of the rest. Alfred is an example of self-aware. Self-awareness is the key that we use for life. Is the machine actually capable of knowing that it exists? So far, we're not there only in fiction. Self-awareness, that's what separates us from machines. We know that we exist, at least most of the time. Everything you see in this list right here, I'm going to be demonstrating a lot of them, are examples of AI. Face ID is artificial intelligence. When you use Face ID on your phone, Siri is an example. I'm going to show you some translating that your phones can do now 
It's going to blow your mind. Many of you are aware that I read foreign newspapers. The question is, how many languages do I speak? Because I read China's news, German news, French, Great Britain, which is theoretically English. I speak no foreign languages whatsoever, but I routinely read these newspapers in their native language by using the built-in capability on the Mac in Safari. We're going to be showing you something in iOS 16 that is going to blow your minds, okay? Uh, how to extract subjects from the background. And then we're going to look at two different things, colorizing photographs and bringing photos to life. The bringing photos to life is really... So let's get started. Let's go on with Siri. What I'm going to do is show you some dictation that Siri can do. So I'm going to open up Note, and inside of Note, I'm going to create a new Note. This is an example of Siri doing dictation, period, new line. If you are very good, Siri will put in commas for you and put in semicolons if necessary, period, new line. I want to thank all of you for showing up to today's meeting and seeing this demonstration. Now, this is an example of artificial intelligence. Siri is going up and taking what I am saying and comparing that and adapting it. So we are seeing actual artificial intelligence, period. Now I'm going to go up and I'm going to edit this just a bit. And there you can see this is what Siri did, and she did a pretty good job. Um, but this is artificial intelligence. On to our next example. Okay, that is built into all of your iPhones, iPads, and Mac. And by the way, on using Siri, here's something most people don't realize. Often when you see people, they'll put the phone right up here to talk to Siri. Don't have to. When I walk out of the house, my phone's in my pocket, and I say, hey, yes, lady, lock the front door. She hears me. I say, hey, yes, lady. I don't want to say it because it'll activate her. Okay, and she's a strange mistress. I don't have to take the phone out of my pocket in order to talk. Now, there, doesn't have to, there can't be a lot of background noise. But I don't have to take the phone out of my pocket to do it. Somehow I accidentally activate Siri sometimes on my phone. And she'll sit and start taking down the dictation of what's going on, on the TV set. Whoops. Yeah. <gasps> now, the other, this is the, Barry, this is the best part. I was watching a, I think it was a German series with subtitles. And she was taking the German down as fast as it was coming across. So I took that down, I went in and translated it, and compared it to, and you'll be seeing this next, compared to what the subtitles? Not very accurate subtitling. <laughs> okay, the next thing we're going to do is show you an example of translating. This also is built into all iPhones, iOS 14 and newer. I will tell you a quick story on this before I show it to you. A good friend of mine who teaches down at uh, Cochise College, Virginia Thompson, is fluent in Japanese. She spent... A couple of years there, she reads and writes fluent Japanese. She was being a smartass one day and responded to my text in Japanese. So what I did is that I went in, I translated it to English. This is right within message. And responded to her in Japanese and sent it to her. Well, she figured out what I was doing. The, what she came back and said is I was amazed by that because the grammar was perfect. Something that Google Translate can't do yet. Translating is something that is happening today. You now can get earbuds you can put in your ear that translates in real time. Also, you can get a little hand device like this that translates in real time with about a thousand languages. I routinely use my phone's translate program to converse with people who do not speak English here in town. I carry on full conversations with them. We had a yard guy come the other day. He speaks maybe six words of English. I speak even less Spanish. He and I had a full conversation, including discussions on politics. And he was amazed because he owns an iPhone also. He had no idea I could do that. You want to know, you know, what, you know, how do I get that capability? I said, well, it's built into your phone. He says, it is? So I went and showed him. And he had an iPhone, I think, iPhone 11, maybe, or 10. It wasn't one of the newer ones. And I said, well, what translate was, he said, wow. It's on your phone someplace. Yeah, it's called Translate. Now, let's take a look and see what happens. Now we're going to take a look at an aspect of AI that you may not have thought about before. What we're going to do is take a look at translating an email. Now, what we have is an email that I received that is written in a language I do not recognize. So what I'm going to do is select it all and then select Translate from the pop-up menu that comes up. Not only do we have a translation, but it's gone in and selected the correct language to translate from, and we have a full translation. 
and we find out it's Polish. This ability is built into virtually every application on the iPhone, iPad, and Mac, and it's a great tool. On that, I was able to read the, the email. I responded in English, translated it to Polish, and sent it back to the guy. It was amazing, and I routinely use this on your phone as an application called Translate. Now, it's limited in the languages. I have two. I have Translate and Google Translate. Google Translate has a lot more languages, including Latin. Um, Apple Translate is a much better application, but fewer languages. Just tap on it, and um, let's go from English to, give me a language. We have Arabic, Chinese, Mandarin, Dutch, French, German, Indonesian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Vietnamese, Turkish. Choose a language. Does anybody know a foreign language? Which one? Okay, French. Désolé, je ne parle pas français. Connaissez-vous une autre langue que nous pouvons Listen. essayer? Je ne parle pas français. Connaissez-vous une autre langue que nous pouvons okay. essayer? Now watch. Yes, I think we can switch to Korean. I'm sure that both of us speak that. Thank you. Yes, I am sure that we can come with a common language somehow. Do you know Korean by any chance? Oh, there it is. I forgot it translates it immediately. Can I just press it? Je suis sûr que nous pouvons venir avec un langage commun. Now, de you can come along and speak. I can hold it up for you. It will take yours in French and translate in English. So you can carry a conversation back and forth very easily. Now, what I am hoping, the one language they do not have yet, or hold it, maybe they, they do have Arabic. Uh, we're going to Egypt next November, and I plan on taking my phone with me and using it when we're out uh, shopping. Okay, so we've seen translating. You have the translating program. You have it available as a sub-menu. It's in mail. It's in notes. It's in Safari. Safari, quite often, will re Siri will recognize it's a foreign language, know that your native language is English, and will translate it for you automatically or give you the option. Yeah. Or, or yeah. Um, interestingly, with Chinese, it does it automatically for me. With, with German, German, Polish, the other languages, it asks. Chinese. Now, I haven't tried it with Arabic yet. I don't care for the Arabic paper. This one is built on iOS 16. Trust me, it works. I use it almost daily. Now, watch this one. We're now going to take a look at something that's part of the new iOS coming out, iOS 16, that uses AI that is just flat amazing. And what we're going to do is come in here and take a look, get a picture. And we're going to go up here and get one of my wife. What I'm going to do is I'm going to press on the subject and you saw that little wiggle line? I now have cut her out. And now I can go into any application I want to. Let's go into Notes. And I'm going to create a new note. And I pasted it that easily. And it'll go in and take a look at any subject that you have. And I'll try and determine the subject. We'll go and take a look at another one. Let's go up and take a look at this house right here. This is the Ryerton Mansion in Flagstaff. And it cut that out. I'm going to come over here, go over to Notes, and paste that one in just as easily. And it's using AI to go up and try and find the subject. And that's coming out in iOS 16. And that is out now. For those of you who've been in photography, while Ben and I were talking about this before the meeting, we used to spend hours doing that, masking in Photoshop. Yes. Now, I mean, in Photoshop, they've had it for a while. You just click a button, and it does it. And it's 99% accurate, including hair. So, I mean, it, it's amazing what you can do. And that's artificial intelligence because what it's done is it, it goes up and has been given hundreds of thousands of photographs where they've identified what the subject is. So that when you do it, it goes and says, ah, I know what that subject looks like and cuts it out. The next one we're going to do, two part of an amazing one. Most of you are old enough to remember black and white photography. Remember we used to take pictures, have them developed, and they were black and white. You're not, Marie, you're not old enough to remember that. Colorizing. What we're going to do in Photoshop, this is available in many applications, not just Photoshop. 
There's devoted apps on the iPhone, Android, Odd Infinitum that does the same thing. I'm just showing you one example. And what it does is, is it takes a look at the photograph, the shades of gray, goes up to the master database, and determines what color best matches that. On the ones I'm going to show you, I can tell you it was 100% accurate because I know what the original colors were. So let's go ahead and take a look at colorizing. In this short video, we're going to take a look at colorizing in Photoshop. Now, Photoshop uses artificial intelligence, part of their neural system, to take a look at photos. And I've tried to find out how it's done, but there's no real information. Adobe's keeping it pretty silent, but my guess is, is what they're doing is they're taking a look at thousands upon thousands of photographs in reverse from color to black and white to see what the black and white gray looks like. And they're using that as a basis for colorizing documents. So I've got a series of photographs here. We're going to take a look and see how well it does and how we can change it. So this is a, a photograph of a young family, circa about 1953, my guess, 52. Um, so what we're going to do is we go up here in Photoshop to Filters, Neural Filter, and we're going to come down here to Colorize, turn Colorize on, and instantly we see the photograph has been colorized. A good portion of it. Now the drapes back here in the background aren't exactly right. So what we're going to do with that is come over here and click there and get a color we want that to be. And I'm going to select uh, this brown color right about there. There we go. You see it's not colored in. And then I'm going to hold down the option key and drag another one over here. And that's color in. And if I don't like it, I can just double click on it down here and change the color a bit and drop it down in a little more brown and increase the strength we use the slider. This uh, this edge right here, I just can't get quite right. So I'm going to try another pointer and drag it down. There we go. And that's done a pretty, uh, actually a pretty decent job. The flesh tones are perfect. Um, the outfits, like let's say I want to change that outfit wasn't really white. Let's say that it was a, a blue color. So I'm just going to tap here on that color, come down here and change it to blue. And there now it's a soft blue. And this bow up here was gold. So I'm going to click on that, come down and find a nice gold color. And copy it and put it more on the, uh, there we go. There, that's closer to what it should be like. But you can see that virtually instantaneously, I'm going to say, yep, that's, I can also go down here and change and modify the saturation. Use these tools to fine tune it. This is the overall image right now. It's a little too much. Add a little more saturation. Reduce noise if I have any noise in it. This one's not too terribly bad. Once I'm done, I'm going to output it right down here to a new layer. And now you can see the difference. That's the before, that's the after. Let's go and save it. Give it a name. Let's go over here to our second image. And let's see what it does on this one. We're going to do the same thing. Come up here to Filter, Neural Filters, select Colorize. And pretty quickly, we get the image colorized. Now, let's see if, you know, will we accept these colors? I'm pretty sure that wasn't the color of the tie. And I could go back in, and we have, like, the ear over here needs to be caught. And we can spend time doing that, but we already talked about doing that. And getting it to look exactly the way we want it. But, yeah, there's two for two now. They did a really good job. Now, let's take a look at an outdoor scene. I'm going to save this one. Okay, let's take a look. I want an outdoor one. There we go. Let's take a look at this one. Now, this car was blue. So let's go see what it does. Okay, I'm once again to colorize. Maybe it was red, come to think of it. I think that's the exact color. Very close to it. Needs a little bit more saturation. That sleeve right there was, in fact, blue. There 
There we go. That's better. And we're going to uh, fix the color here. Actually, that's the way I remember it. So, you know, that's done a pretty, pretty decent job. So we're going to save that one. And you get the general idea how easy it is using artificial intelligence in Photoshop to colorize old photos. Those applications are available, multiple applications that will colorize photos. There are sites on the internet that will colorize. One of them is MyHeritage. One thing that my, that my Heritage does free that is AI generated that is just flat amazing is bringing still pictures to life. And I'm not going to say much more than just show you what happens. Now we're going to take a look at a little something a little bit different. I'm up at the My Heritage site and they have the ability to take old photographs and do some really interesting things with them. The first thing I want to do is go in and show you their, their colorize. So we're going to come over here, grab a photo, and this is a photo of my mom as a young woman, and I want to see how they can do it colorizing. And wow! I'm actually kind of impressed. That did a really nice job. And we can go over here and see that's the original and that's what my heritage did. I'm also going to take and come over here to animate photos. And this is the, the real big thing about that uses AI because what we're going to do is take a static photo and see what it can do to animate it. Now it's going into animating, and what it's going to do is select a face to animate of the two, and then we'll see how well it does. Wow, that's rather impressive. And let's try how it does with my mother. That's fair. It looks somewhat like my mother, but not real close. Let's try one more. And we'll go up and get... Yeah, let's try this one of my mother and see what it does. And what it's doing is it's taking, using artificial intelligence... It's going out and examining this photo, then going out and finding thousands of others. That looks a lot more like my mom. And creates an animation from it. So I think it did a pretty good job on this one. And we're going to do just one more. I want to see how it does with my dad. And you can see it's fairly fast. Um, that is very much like my dad very very close and so that's my heritage in their animating capability okay what i want to do is take a short break before we go into the next part of this in which we're going to talk about creating art creating music and creative writing with ai what i've shown you right now is practical everyday stuff that you could be involved with the next half is really mind-blowing of what the near future and current future is and this is rapidly changing so let's take a break Okay, the first thing we're going to talk about is creating art using artificial intelligence. The program I'm going to show you is called Wind Journey. MID. MID. Ah, okay, let me fix that right now. Yeah, you're right, it is. I don't know why I had that. MID Journey, right? Okay, let's go up and save it. I am playing, okay. The program that we're going to be using is called Mid Journey. Um, since this, I did this presentation, I've gotten access to another one called Dall E. I think it's a little bit better than MidJourney. It's a little bit easier to use. And what these applications do, they're web-based applications where you give them a text sentence of what you want and it generates it as an image. And rather than me trying to describe it, let me show it to you. Now we're going to take a look at something very interesting. And this is um, an AI application and there's a number of them out there. I just happen to choose this one that allow you to create art. Um, and it's using the AI engine. This particular one, Mind Journey, uses the Discord front end. Now, I'm not going to go explain how Discord works because it's rather complicated. But I'm going to show you. You start off by typing a keyword, imagine, 
and then you give it a description of what you want. Um, in this case, it's going to be a forest scene, and then a group of geese, and I'm making this up as I go along, and then a uh, lake, and let's see what we get. And it goes and starts to do a render, and it's going out and looking at millions of paintings, photographs, whatever, and artwork with these type of keywords, and then it's assembling four different versions. Now, when these four versions are done, we can go and take a look and see if there's anything that we like. And when it's done, we can take a look at it, and here we have, well, there's our geese and our geese. In our case, we can take a look and see mm, which one do we like best. And I think this one right down here, which is they're numbered one, two, three, four. And then I can go and I can upscale, which means add more detail, or I can get versions. Well, in this case, I'm going to go four, and I'm going to upscale four, and it's going to go through and render it and add more detail to it. And we'll take a look at it. And that's not a bad looking scene. I rather like that. And I'm going to, and that was all done through an AI engine and just giving it three words. And I'm going to go and I'm going to uh, save this one. How do I save it? I'll come back and save it later. Oh, I'm going to upscale to the max and give my most detail. And then we're going to do another image. Now, on the f I'm paying, there is a free version, but the free version is very difficult to work with uh, because you're sharing a room with other people. Finding your artwork sometimes can be impossible. Um, but this version I'm using is $10 a month. You can cancel any time, and you get 200 images, which sounds like a lot until you start going through and realize I've done one, two, three four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine images just on this demonstration. And we're almost done with this. We're getting some more detail. And we'll do another image and show you a variation. And there we go. I, I like that one. I like the way that the pastel images, it's not photorealistic. And I could have said, this is more of a painting, which is what I was looking for. So I can go, I want to save this image. So I'm going to go to the web. Oh, there we go. Save image. And there is a title. Now what I'm going to do is create another image, but in the style. And I've always liked Van Gogh's Starry Night. And I wish that he'd done a cathedral in that style. So I'm going to say, imagine cathedral and sunset, because I like sunsets, style of Starry Night Van Gogh. And let's see what we get. Now there's uh, all kinds of information on how to use prompts and to do prompts and the words to go with it and weights. And you can really get involved and it's actually a lot of fun, but it can be very addictive. So let's see what we're gonna get. I can see one right now that I like. In fact, I like all four of them. Wow. I think I'm going to go with one. And I'm going to upscale one, because I like that one. It's going to create a larger image. And let's take a look. Ooh, I, hey, I like that. And we'll open the original. Uh, okay. So I'm going to save that. And that is using a AI program to generate art. And this particular one is uh, Mid Journey. There are others available. Um, and we'll be taking a look at another example of creativity coming up um, here's one i did i told i wanted an office background for when i'm using zoom mm. and that's what it generated so let's say i, I don't know if this is going to work um give me some words puppy dog puppy dog type bongos yeah what puppy dog playing the bongos dinosaur eating the puppy dog playing the bongos dinosaur eating the puppy dog playing the bongos well, let's give it a little run through, right? I don't know how, how much is the subscription, by the way? $10 a month. And that's all there is is monthly? You can't, like, get a year? Yeah, you can get a year. It's a little bit cheaper. Uh, you can get uh, more benefit packages. Mm hmm. I think this one right here, you too. Let's do an upscale of that one. 
and I want to do versions of that. So we're going to get an upscale version of it, and we're going to get variations on it. Oh, I've got one I want to do. Dogs playing poker. Oh, to see, so, no, so no, see if it, how close it comes to the, the, the famous one. Okay, there's our variation. Oh, that's kind of fun. There's our hot dog and our bongos. And here's our four variations on it. I think I like that one right there. So that's how it works. That's mid-journey. Okay, let's try puppies playing bongos. Photorealistic hot dog. Da, 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 da. This is a different engine. Give me the same parameters and see what it comes up with. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I want to try... Mm-hmm. Wow. It didn't give what I wanted. I did one in uh, Mid Journey that is spectacular. It has Walt and the mouse with a silhouette with the Citadel's castle in the background. I'm getting some nice castle pictures that look very much... I'm going to remove the word Disney World out of it. Ah, interesting. Yeah, I don't see Walt in here at all, except it's the style of Walt Disney. Okay, now let's go back and continue or we'll never get done. Music and editing. <clears throat> I believe I've got videos on this. Now we're going to take a look at a program or a website, actually, called Eva, A-I-V-A, that creates music using artificial intelligence. And the, you can see the URL down here. You can go up to it. It's free. Um, you only have to pay more if you want to do more than three downloads in a month. And what we're going to do is we're going to create some music. And I've already created some right here, and I'll play those in a little bit. But to create it, you come up, click on Create Track, and then you select the type of music that you want. And in this case, I'm going to select um, Epic Orchestra Modern Cinematic and then I can give it a signature. I prefer major keys for this. The duration I want to have about two minutes. And I can tell the number of compositions. I'm going to ask it to create three variations. And we're going to go and create the track. And it takes about a minute. So let's play the uh, first one that's done. See what it sounds like. That one kind of reminds me of something out of uh, Lord of the Rings. So let's try this next one. It has a tempo of medium fast. And I like that one. That'd be good background for a video. Let's try our third one. And interestingly, in that that is the exact type of music I was looking for for a video that I'm doing. So, understand that I just showed you the bare basics. And I'm going to show you another video. It's a tutorial video that they have for this on what you can do after you generate the music. So, let's go in and take a look at that video. Hi, I'm Brad Fry, Music Supervisor here at Ava Technologies, and today I'm happy to give you an updated tutorial on editing with the piano roll, which now features the ability to edit individual notes. To get started with this feature, right-click on a piece in your track library and choose Open in Piano Roll. Here you'll be greeted with an interface that shows you all of the layers heard in the piece, like your melody and chords, what instruments are playing in each layer, and what notes those instruments are actually playing. This interface also allows you to make changes to the composition, including adding and removing individual notes, instruments, and various effects. 
At the top of the interface, you'll see a row of helpful buttons, including a slider to change the zoom level of the piano roll, a button to view keyboard shortcuts, a button to view tutorial videos like this one, a button to view the piano roll in spectator mode, which allows you to see all of the notes and layers at once, and a button to add various effects to the entire composition like bass boost, vinyl saturation, and reverb. Just below these controls are the section headers, which show you the name of the section you're currently looking at. Clicking on this name will allow you to make broad changes to that entire section, such as replacing the section with a completely new section, regenerating the section as a variation of either itself or another section in the piece, or deleting the section entirely. You can make many of these changes at once before finally clicking save and render to apply all of your changes at once and regenerate sections if necessary. Below these section headers are various tracks such as melody, chords, and bass, which show you the instruments playing those elements and what notes they're playing, as well as allowing you to make various changes to those instruments. The comment track, which sits above all of the other layers, allows you to write little notes to yourself and look at them later. The tempo track, which sits just below it, allows you to change the overall speed of the piece by writing a number. A lower number will make the piece play slower, and a higher number will make the piece play faster. Simply type in your desired value and click Set Constant BPM to change the tempo. To change an instrument in one of your layers, first select the layer containing the instrument you want to change, then click on the drop down menu for the instrument track, navigate through the various categories to find your desired instrument and select it. To add an instrument, click add instrument at the top, then click the drop down menu for the instrument track and select the instrument you want to add. And to delete the instrument entirely, click the gear button to the right of the instrument and click delete instrument. I want to quickly mention the percussion layer at the bottom before we move on since it's a bit unique. The drop down menu at the top shows you what drum kit is currently being used, which you can change the same way you change instruments in other layers. However, each kit comes with its own set of samples, which you can see below in these other drop down menus. So there's one track for the kick drum, another for the snare, etc. And you can swap these individual samples for other samples within the same kit if you'd like. Uh, it's also possible that you see these unassigned tracks, which basically mean that while the music engine generated these extra notes for the drum part, it decided not to attach any drum samples to those notes for one reason or another. You can still assign samples to those notes by clicking the drop down menu and choosing one of the samples in the kit. Other options for editing the sound of the instruments include Auto Staccato, which will intelligently try to choose the appropriate articulation for each note, and Sustain Pedal, which will allow the notes of a piano instrument to ring out. Additionally, if you have some kind of reverb added to the composition via the Effects button at the top, you can toggle that reverb on and off on a track-by-track -track basis with the Reverb checkbox here. Clicking the gear icon to the right of each instrument will allow you to make even more precise changes to the instrument, such as changing the octave transposition, gain offset, and panning. The jagged line icon here to the right of the layer name opens up a new part of the interface, which allows you to draw automation curves that affect the sound of the instruments. The drop down menu here allows you to switch between these various automation tracks, including dynamics which affects how loud or soft an instrument is playing, a low frequency cut, which is a filter that removes the lower bass sounding frequencies, and a high frequency cut, which will remove the higher sounding frequencies. In addition to changing how the instruments play, you can also adjust when the instruments play as well. The colored blocks on each instrument track indicate that the instrument is currently playing at that moment in time, and if there is no colored block present, the instrument will not play anything. These blocks can be adjusted using the pointer mode and pencil mode toggle at the top left. Pointer mode, which is the default mode, allows you to drag the block around or drag the ends of the block to make it shorter or longer. You can also select a block and press delete to delete the entire block. In pencil mode, you can draw new blocks or remove sections of an existing block by clicking inside the instrument track. Finally, you can change exactly what notes the instruments are playing in each layer by directly editing the notes you see in the piano roll. 
Using the pointer mode, you can click the notes and drag them around to change what notes are playing and where they're playing. You can drag the ends of the note around to change how long the note plays. And you can add new notes by switching to pencil mode and clicking where you want to add new notes. Check the shortcuts button at the top for helpful shortcuts, such as pressing delete to remove a note, or control plus C or V to copy and paste sections of notes. As you begin to make changes, edit mode will automatically be enabled, indicated at the top left by this green light. This means the real-time player is currently active and your changes will be heard immediately without the need to save and render. This also means that the quality of the audio and the performance will be slightly reduced temporarily so that your changes can be processed and heard more efficiently. Just keep in mind that when you're done making your changes, it's still important that you click save and render in order to actually save your changes and render the higher quality version of the audio that you can download later. When clicking save and render, a dialog box will appear asking you if you'd like to render the piece with auto mixing enabled, which will intelligently decide how loud each instrument should be. Note that if you've made any manual changes to the volume level of any of the instruments, these will be overridden by this auto mixing. If you have any questions or feedback about any of this, feel free to email us at feedback at ava.ai or join us on Discord and let us know what you think there. Thanks for watching. But for anybody involved, like GarageBand, this is second generation GarageBand. Okay. Because it, it goes and creates the music. In GarageBand, you'd have to take and add in loops. This is actually generating, it can go in and change something you couldn't do in GarageBand at all. Um, I use this one a lot to generate music as background music. Yes, Barry, in podcasts, well, let me back up here. In podcasts, they're using this a lot, but the next one is where podcasting is used a lot. That's called creative writing with AI. Many people have trouble writing. This is also a very controversial topic. My wife and I get gotten into very heated arguments on this because is it or is it not plagiarism? I maintain that it can be misused and can be plagiaristic. I use it, I've been using it a lot lately, when I've got, I can't start a paper. I know what I want to say, but I can't get the opening paragraph. That solves that problem. I've been able to, because it goes and generates variations, say, hey, that that's really close to what I want. If you listen to podcasts like I do, I have found out that I say better than 90% of them are now, the ones I listen to, are AI generated, in which they go up and they find a theme and they let the artificial intelligence create the podcast for them. And all they have to do is fill in with the pictures. Generate entire blogs, long articles, and essays in minutes with our long form writer. You can find it by clicking AI Assistant to your left and then by clicking on Launch Writer. Let's use AI to write a blog. We'll start by generating blog ideas and titles from the drop down menu. And then we'll click generate. And here's some great titles to get our blog off to a good start. You can click the plus or add now button to drop your favorite output right onto the document. Now let's go ahead and hook our audience with an engaging introduction. Now here's the cool part. You can go back to your document and just highlight the title to give Simplified's AI something to work with. Then let's sit back and watch Loki create an entire paragraph in one click. Now let's go ahead and generate a cohesive outline for our blog. Now I can generate content even quicker by highlighting each subpoint, and our shortcut menu will pop up. I can just click right section and it's gonna automatically complete that section of my blog for me. Now, if there's a sentence or paragraph that's just not cutting it for you, you can simply highlight it and select rewrite from the shortcut menu. And the AI will generate that same sentiment with different words. Every good copywriter knows you need to end with a clear call to action. So to wrap things up, select blog conclusion paragraph from the drop down menu, and then we'll put in our overarching blog topic and our desired call to action. And click generate. And there you have it. 
a clear call to action to make sure that your audience knows exactly what to do. And look at that, a full blog written in just minutes using Simplified's AI Assistant. Check out our other videos to see how Simplified's AI tools can help you every step of the way with blogging. See you there. That I've been using, I thought I had a video on it. This one is very limited. You only allow 5,000 characters, which isn't much. You do a new document. And we uh, have now, like in a word processor. So um, AI in every day. So we go up and highlight it. And then I can do um, Am I out of characters? I'm out of characters. Rats. So I can't. Um, I can specially the language, the tone of it. Convincing, appreciative, awestruck. You use to the right letters for you. Um, blog outlines, blog section writings. Um, select the topic. Okay, I this one might work. Give it keywords. Um, let's see if I there there. Okay, so it's generated. A has changed the way we write, create music, and art. It is not just a concept anymore. It's here to stay. In the past few years, AI has been used to generate music and lyrics for pop songs and rap tracks. In the future, AI will be able to produce more genres of music in a more efficient way than human musicians. I only specified one variation. I could have specified multiple variations. Let's go and... No. Okay. Um, I can go in and select that sentence and have it expand upon that. And I can come down here and expand upon this. I can rephrase it if I want to, if it sounds too much, or I can continue. I'll write the next sentences. Okay, it didn't, it was too much. Let's go up here and let's rephrase that. The AI was stumped. Couldn't rewrite it. Yeah. Um, let's go and... Write for me, that, that's a command. The name of the program is write, R-Y-T-E. And that means go and do what I just said to do. Thank you. So I can up here and the blog idea and outline. This is the outline we are talking about before. And I'm going to go in, I want three variants. I want convincing, optimal for creativity level. Let's see if I've got enough characters left to do it. Ooh, here we go. There's my outline. And let's go here and select this. And what did you do to close that? Select blog ID and outlines. Oh, There we go. I've uh, expanded upon it, and I can go in and keep expanding and expanding, and end up writing the entire blog for me. My wife is concerned about: is it college and high school students using this exactly? <laughs> and now there is a plagiarism checker in it to check for plagiarism. Yeah. Now, Simplified.io I think is slightly better, but more complicated to use. Both of them have the capability of adding graphics and video. Blog, call to action, copywriting framework, business idea pitch, brand names. I mean, use it to write letters to people. For me, my biggest problem is the first paragraph. For me, I can outline what I want to say perfectly, and I can go start at point two and write like crazy. It's introduction. I do. I look at that, and I'm stopped. And conclusions. I, I don't know why today this is working like gangbusters, but I'm generating an entire article. But like we're talking about, you know, AI is here. It's only in its infancy. What we're seeing now, we're talking about maybe a six-month-old kid. That's where we are in the realm of things. 
Well, see, you know, and this the argument I use with my wife is that I have no creativity. What I can do and do very, very well is take an idea and expand upon it. That's um, the same way, yes. Yeah, the like, you know, the one of the things I'm taking a ceramics class and a yarn bowl. My wife wanted me to do. Actually, a friend of ours to come up with the basic design for it. I was clueless, so I went out and researched yarn bowl designs, and yarn now bowl? yarn bowl. Okay. Yes, it's for knitters. And I have now come up with a yarn bowl design that is uniquely different. Doesn't involve creativity, but the application of human engineering, not creativity. To come up with a basic design of it, I hadn't a clue. But once I saw, uh, ah, okay, I know what that is. But if we do this, this, and that, and now I have what looks like, well, the teacher said is she was impressed with what I had done. Do we have any other questions about artificial intelligence? Um, that has actually been put through a so computer. A yes. And, <laughs> and what they determined is that the way Shakespeare's writing style is it could never be generated randomly. So an infinite number of monkeys on an infinite number of typewriters could not do it. But, but an infinite number of monkeys with an infinite number of typewriters using an artificial intelligence-based parameter guidance. No, maybe. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? Are we continuing or no? Well, we kind of bypassed that question. Your last thing was um, yeah. about room and cost right. and running out of money. Okay, we are back in discussing what the future holds. I made a proposition that we continue until the money runs out. A question came up as to how would we disperse funds. My feeling on that is, is everyone who's paid in for this year would be paid back, and the remaining funds used to pay off anything we have for this year, and then equally divided amongst, I don't I know what. The officers. I, don't, I, don't, I don't need my money back. I don't need my money back. Give it to the officers. But what I would like to propose is that we continue to meet until the money runs out. We examine different places to meet. Wonderlust would be nice. Yeah, I Double-check the county room again, but if we can get the, the coffee shop room and its adequate size, and we've got internet access, projection. I mean, we have our own projector still. We just need our yeah. Well, maybe, maybe in some of your places you don't really need to have all this equipment either because we can do some things without the equipment. You know. Not really. Yeah. Well, because it's being video recorded for those who aren't here, so. It's, that's mainly just the recording the computer screen. Yeah, but you still have to be able to see what's going on. And most people can't see a small screen like this. Right. So we still have to have the projector. We are, we are, yeah. We have the projector. Yeah, we have the projector. Yeah, we have the projector. So, you know. I don't know if you actually really looked at that. Okay, what, what we need. Take care, Bonnie. What we need. I would really rather like to continue here for the simple reason it's a good facility. Yes. It's comfortable. I'd like to continue here for a while. What's the cost here? $40 a meeting. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I have no idea. No, we have a new person called Jeanette. Yeah, I, I I thought I sent you the email on that. She's a new person. Yeah, we'll eventually get billed. It'll catch up with us. Um, it's a very nice facility. Um, one or less would be not. But it, what we need is some place that has a blank wall or screen, internet access. Those are two, and seats for 20 people. I'm, yeah, until we, unless we actually find something better, we'll continue here. Yeah. Okay. You're right, by the way. What? You're right, by the way. Oh, yeah. You're right. I'm dead. We have a discussion on using you're AI right. to generate right. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> if, there are no, if there are no further questions, yes. Um, thank you all very much, and we'll see you next month when we talk about how to get around scams and phishing. Everybody have a great day.